Thanks for joining us today. This is uh, one of our tech talks that Chris has been doing, and we were uh, interested to get some folks here to understand a little bit more about the PNC versus the CNC. So I'm not going to steal a lot of Chris's thunder other than thank you. And we are recording this and ask that you stay on mute to the end and we'll open it up for questions. Definitely think this will be well under an hour, probably inside of uh, 30, 40 minutes. And we have some special guests I'll let Chris introduce, but I'm John Conway. I'm the automation sales manager here for Rexel Western New York. Should you, anything, you ever need anything, reach out to me. I will introduce Chris Ryan, who works on my team. Chris is our Megatronics specialist. He's been with us just turning over three years. And uh, Chris has a Megatronics certificate. And uh, he's uh, very well, very much a wealth of knowledge when it comes to not only uh, this type of products, but also motion, robotics. And we're excited to have him on the team. So, Chris, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, yeah, thanks, John. Yeah, I'll get right into it. Um, I'll start off with the introduction of who we are because it's going to be recorded for um, everybody to see. And then I'll talk about what is PNC, high level overview, the components of the system. And then we'll let John Miller from Rockwell uh, talk about the functions of PNC, do a demonstration and some frequency, frequently asked questions. So who we are is uh, Rexel, we're an electrical distributor. Uh, we, our branches are in Western New York. Uh, for Rockwell, we are the um, distributor for this region, our APR. Uh, we have two branches. There used to be a third. This one down in Bradford is no longer there. Um, we actually have another branch. We just acquired another electrical distributor down here. But we cover uh, as far east as Rochester and northwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, so there are the phone numbers there for the two branches. Um, John Conway is my manager. He has a team of product specialists that do pre-sale and post-sale support for Rockwell Automation products and software. So we have a, a specialist who supports uh, drives, another guy who builds motor control centers, uh, a network specialist, and so forth. Um, my area is mechatronics, so that's everything that involves um, position control. So that'll be your core portfolio of servo drives, motors, actuators, um, robotic integration. We have a software uh, for motion control called Emulate 3D, independent cart portfolio, and then PNC, which a lot of people don't know that we have. Um, this is a way we can use uh, Rockwell components to control CNC machines. So what is PNC? Uh, PNC is a software tool. It includes uh, HMI screens and ladder logic, some uh, similar to sample code that you would get from Rockwell's sample code library. Um, it runs RS-274D CNC part programs. Uh, CNC part programs are text files that contain G codes and M codes to run a CNC machine, where G codes are gonna be your moves and M codes are gonna be your machine codes or miscellane miscellaneous codes that'll be your, your IO and switches to turn things on and off. Uh, so these are some of the standard G codes that that almost every CNC machine has. Uh, PNC, the software tool, will come with a pretty large set of standard G codes and M codes. There is instructions that you will get uh, to add M codes or something like that if you need certain codes for your CNC machine. Uh, we we have methods to add those. So this is what a part program looks like. You have your G codes, uh, usually where you set up um, absolute or um, indexing or your, your traverse and your, your motion, and this will build a part. So the, the flow or process usually comes, starts from a 2D CAD program. Uh, there, there's many to choose from that will convert your, your 2D part program into a um, CAD file or a, a G code. ASCII text file that will then get transferred over to your CNC controller and that will control the machine and that will be your tool path and create your part. So PNC is compatible for a lot of different machine types. There's a whole slew of them here. Um, here's an example of a um, CNC machine that was built on Allen Bradley controls. This is a glue dispenser. So a customer would um, 
have a part program for this and they would run it and it would dispense glue on that, make a seal there. So an overview of what a PNC system looks like, uh, we've got uh, panel view plus sevens or panel view 5000s. I'll, I'll go into detail of all the components that can be used. Uh, motion controllers being your control logics or your cam compact logics. Uh, industrial ethernet switches and then your SIP motion drives. So I'll go into that a little bit further, starting with the HMI screens. So these these are the screens that are available. Uh, the, we've got the panel view plus sevens that run on factory talk view for machine edition. Uh, we've also got the the latest panel view 5000 series, the panel view uh, 5510 and the 5310. These run on um, view designer, which is included with Studio 5000 V27 or later. Um, so if you've got the newer panel views, uh, you don't need a separate software package, but there are templates from PNC to run uh, PNC, PNC on uh, factory talk view for machine edition or on view designer. So either of these will work. Um, to keep in mind though, you wanna use a larger screen because there's a lot of controls. All the controls are gonna be done from the HMI. So you're gonna want like a 15 inch screen or, or better. Looking at the controllers, any control logics, um, controller can run motion. Uh, on the compact logic side, uh, we, we've got the 5480, which has uh, Windows 10 built into it that runs side by side with with ladder logic. Uh, we've got the 5380, which is the latest compact logics. This runs with the compact 5000 IO, uh, which has the faster speeds, about 20 times faster than the 5370 controllers. Um, these have been around forever. They they run on the, the L2s and the L3s run on the um, 1769 IO. Um, and then there are guard logics versions of um, almost all of these except for the L1s and L2s. Um, and then the control logics being the architecture class. Um, these all run on the um, same IO and they have um, safety versions of these as well. So then you have your SIP servo drive, SIP motion servo drives. That will be these three on the right. The, the Kinetics 5100 is, is not going to be used for PNC, but the 5300 starting from the smallest machining machine or capabilities to the largest, your 5300 uh, will be hardware safety only. Um, it's going to be, it's not going to be able to use the single um, cable servo drive, servo motors. Um, then you got the Kinetics 5500, which has the capability to to use the single cable, which has the the power and the feedback in one cable with your servo motor. Um, you can put the 5500 and the 5700s on a shared bus. And then with the 5700, you get the most capability. You get advanced safety instructions, uh, where you can say um, safe torque off if you have if you're accelerating too fast or safe direction. Um, you could you also have different bus options. You can have a diode front end, or you can have a regenerator power power supply, things like that with the 5700. So your highest access count would go here. So for for most PNC machines, you'd use a Connect 5500 or 5700. more uh, information about these, but these are all going to be controlled directly from the logics controller. So there, there is no configuration uh, in the in the servo drive itself with these. We also have um, variable frequency drives that are controlled uh, by motion over Ethernet. The component class AC drive is going to be your PowerFlex 527. A, a lot of people are going to be familiar with the PowerFlex 525, which is uh, controlled over Ethernet and uh, configurable in Connected Components Workbench or the standalone 523. The 527 uh, is the same form factor that is controlled uh, by motion constructions. You put that right in the motion group with the rest of your motion controls. And this goes all the way up to 30 horse. And then we have the PowerFlex 755, um, which is which has an option, has a SIP motion card, that communication card you can put in it, and that'll get you all the way up to 1500 horsepower. Uh, the the 753 and the and these other ones are 
are not going to be used in PNC. It would be the PowerFlex 755 for your ar architecture class variable frequency drive. So then we've got our rotary servo motors that we're going to be looking at. Uh, this will be your VP series. The VP series of rotary motors have the single cable for power and feedback. Uh, we have different options. We have the VPL, which is your standard low inertia servo motor. We also have your VPF food grade and your VPC, which is going to be your continuous duty or your, your medium inertia version. Then we've got the MP series. This has a separate power cable and feedback cable. Uh, it has different styles. These actually go a little bit larger than the VP series, but same thing. We have the, the low inertia, the MP, uh, MPM, medium inertia, the food grade, and the stainless steel versions of these. So here's a positioning chart where you can see the size that these go up to. Uh, the, the newest motor, um, not not going to be used for most applications in PNC, but these MMAs are a recent servo motor that was just released, go all the way up to 205 kilowatts. But you see the uh, servo motor class here with the with the MPLs uh, go, all the, go all the way up to almost 18 kilowatts, and then the VP series um, over here at 7.5 kilowatts. Uh, I wanted to add this chart too because this is another component of a PNC system. This is the transfer tool. So once you make your your PNC part program that has your tool pathing in it, you'll use a PNC transfer tool to transfer that over to your Logix controller. That's one method to do it. The other method would be to take this part program on an SD card and put that in your controller or directly into your HMI. So all, all those methods of transferring your part program to your controller are suitable. So this is a little bit of FAQ, but for a qualifying machine or what are your next steps? I uh, just wanted to clarify a couple things. So PNC, the, the templates and the sample code are owned by the Rockwell OEM team. They develop and maintain uh, the software tool they, they update it and they have a repository in their SharePoint. Could also be accessed by the application code manager database. Um, so that's where that stuff goes. To qualify a project, this is, these are going to be some of the information you're going to want to get initially to give to us or the PN, PN, um, or your machine builder. So you're going to want to know how many different types of programs or parts are going to run through that machine. What size are they? What M and G codes? To just to see if they're going to be native to the PNC software, if we're going to have to add any custom ones. You're going to want to know the offsets of the tools and the number of access axes and parameters. Some good questions to, to get started. What type of training is available? So the training is going to be available for OEMs who build CNC machines or for system integrators that want to retrofit, retrofit a CNC machine uh, for an end user. If you're an end user or somebody who buys machines, uh, just give us a call and we will we'll sell you the parts and we'll connect you with a system integrator who can do that retrofit for you. Um, if we have a local integrator that will do it, that we can get them trained, um, or we have a couple of system integrators nationwide that have done this several times that, that could do this for you. Um, lastly, why is Logix better than a standard CNC controller? Um, I would say, because it uses ladder logic. So a common motion application that we do uh, with CNC machines is build part loaders. So we, we might build a pick and place type of machine that would load raw material, raw material into a CNC machine. And then when the CNC machine is finished, it would unload that into a finished part stack. So with the logics controller, uh, you can do that CNC controls and your, your part loading on the same controller. So it, It'll it'll simplify the programming down to one language. Uh, it'll also help you with cost and commissioning. Speed will be a little bit better. So from there, um, I'll hand it over to John that can talk about some of the features, do a little demonstration, and um, answer some more questions on his end. I'll stop sharing now. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. My name is uh, John Miller. I'm a, a principal engineer for Rockwell Automation, and uh, I'm in my lab today in Michigan, 
I have uh, PLCs and drives set up in the lab and I'm physically connected to one of the PLCs so I can give you a live demonstration of PNC. I wanted to start off and show you this slide here of the machine that I have in my lab. On the right hand side is a uh, mechanical machine. It's got three axes on it. It has uh, uh, Rockwell servo motors and Kinetics 5700 drives and there's a PLC on this machine. I use this machine to test out various profiles and various applications for PNC. So clearly PNC is a, uh, is a tool that will control axes and it will run a M and G code program. And uh, I would say that uh, it can be used on any machine that has servo motors. So on the left-hand side, you see a 3D model or a CAD drawing of that machine. And I'm gonna use that uh, CAD to do a demonstration. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that up. This is uh, some Rockwell software called Emulate 3D, where I can import in the CAD model of my physical machine and I can tie it to the PLC. So I believe I have that tied to the PLC right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and call up my HMI screens. And uh, this is what you'll see on your panel view. These are uh, screens that would fit on a panel view seven or a panel view 5500. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and that will bring up the main screen of PNC. And this is what the main screen that the operator would look at. And uh, I'll go ahead and start the sequence here and hit cycle start. And what you see on the right hand side is the uh, the machine going through its motion. And as I execute this program, it's going to draw a tool path. On the left hand side is the HMI screens and the screens are divided up into four quadrants. So you see the top left quadrant is the physical part program and it's scrolling through live and it's going through the uh, entire program to draw that tool path. On the right hand side is axis status. So I have the XYZ axes and uh, there's some spindles on here. So what you're seeing is a template. So this is the physical template that we start with, and uh, it will out of the box uh, run a part program, as you can see here. So there's also, if you note, right where my mouse is on the top right is a little motor button. And when I press that, I can go to the axis status. So this is showing the axes being enabled, in position, home, returned, or faulted. And when I click that one more time, I can show the axis status as far as position air, current, motor capacity, inverter capacity, and there's a couple of uh, load meters for the uh, spindles. So the idea here is that uh, uh, this template is the starting point, and you basically tell it uh, how many axes you have, and you tell it the feeds and speeds, and then once you do that, it's ready to run a part program. So I'm gonna go ahead and motor this back to the uh, starting point that shows the axis display and draw your attention to the bottom left uh, quadrant. This is where the production data is. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cycle start again, and uh, it'll go through and it'll run that part again. And on the bottom uh, left quadrant is showing the cycle time. As I uh, click through here and use the motor button, and I'll hit a refresh, this is the toolpath graph that's included in the HMI. So when I hit cycle start, it's gonna go ahead and draw that tool path on the HMI as it's drawing it on the machine on the right-hand side. This has got uh, full CNC capabilities. So what I mean by that is I can go through and I can hit cycle stop and it stopped the profile. I can hit cycle start and it'll continue the profile. The other thing I can do is I can go to single step mode. When I go to single step mode, it will run the part program one block at a time. So every time I hit the uh, cycle start button, it's basically jogging through the program one executed block at a time. And so these are all great uh, features for troubleshooting the uh, tool path. And I can certainly go back to uh, continuous mode and cycle start, and it'll continue to uh, draw that path. So then uh, going over to the bottom right hand quadrant, these are the machine codes that are active inside the controller right now. So you can see here that uh, I'm physically, right where my mouse is, I'm turning that laser on and off to draw that part. So I'm using an M code, M20 and M21, 
to uh, turn that laser on and off. And you can see that toggling on and off as it's going through the profile to, uh, to etch out that correct part. As again, uh, use the motor button on the right hand side here. It takes me to a feed rate screen. So I'll go ahead and hit cycle start again. And uh, this screen is used to increase or decrease the uh, uh, speed of the uh, tool path, and you can do that on the fly. So I've got a little slider bar down here, and I can take that down, and I'm slowing down the feed rate and almost coming to a complete stop. You can see it's really moving really slow. And of course, I can take it to a stop, and it stops completely. And as I increase that, I can increase or decrease the uh, speed of that profile on the fly. And uh, when I click that one more time, it takes me to another feature, and this is called the angle offset. In the CNC world, this is also known as part rotation. And in a lot of cases, this is used to, uh, uh, for example, on a plasma cutter to uh, rotate the part. And it's also used on grinders where a typical grinder application is the grinder head is set at a 33 degree angle and we can draw the profile at uh, basically any angle that we program and it'll go through and execute that part. So I'll go ahead and enable this feature here and hit cycle start. And what you'll see here is that it's going to draw that same AB logo, but it's going to draw it at a uh, an angle of 113.45 degrees. So it's really a handy uh, type of a uh, instruction here that will let you go through and virtually put that AB logo profile in any rotation or any uh, uh, position on that machine. The other thing I can do here is I can hit uh, cycle stop. And of course, I, uh, I stop the, uh, the program and uh, I'm clicking this button called jog retract and it's the bottom left button there. And it brings up this little pop-up where uh, I can jog off of the profile. I can hit a uh, enable here. And once I hit that jog retract enabled, now I can jog the axes. So I've got Y axis selected. So you can see I can jog up and I can select X and I'll jog over to the right. And I'll hit Y again and bring that down. And what I'm demonstrating is the fact that you can take your uh, uh, profile and stop it like I did, and you can jog off of it, and then you can either replace that tool or clean up the tool, maybe clean the chips off, or do whatever uh, maintenance is required on that tool. And then once you're done, you can just go ahead and close that window. And when you hit cycle start, what you see is that it's going through exactly that same profile and then it picked up right where it left off. So this is a, uh, a nice little CNC feature that we have implemented in PNC. And this was actually a request from a customer, uh, Alcoa, where they cut aluminum parts and there's thousands and thousands of parts, uh, chips that get snagged up on their tool. So they wanted a way to, in the middle of their profile, to jog off of it, bring it over to the operator where he can clean the the uh, tool chips off the, the tool, and then just cycle back and completely pick up back where he left off. So that's able to do that, and it's a great feature for them. You know, I was talking to uh, Chris when we were putting together this presentation, and he said back in the day when he was a CNC operator, he had the ability to uh, manually turn on the laser and trim the part or cut off some scrap onto the part. So uh, I thought I would take the opportunity to uh, demonstrate that. So I'm going to go ahead and first of all, shut this angle off and I'm going to motor the bottom right hand quadrant back here. And you can see my laser is shut off right now, but I have another feature here called MDI, which stands for manual data input. And uh, so I can put in the code to start that laser, which is M20. And when I cycle that, now you can see the laser is on right now. And then I can go over to manual mode. And if I use the motor buttons on the bottom right quadrant, I can go over to the screen that has the jogs in it. So I can go ahead and hit uh, the X jog. And, and there you can see, I basically I can jog anywhere I want. 
and I can trim or I can uh, uh, fix up any uh, type of profile in a in a manual mode. Right. And then uh, when I'm done or if I see something I don't like, I can hit emergency return. The emergency return button over here will take the axes back to their start position, but you can also see that it shut off the laser. So uh, everything is kind of intertwined to to make sure that uh, it's safe for operation. And I, at this time, I wanted to mention one of the things that uh, I originally had set up here is that in manual mode, uh, I didn't give the ability to turn that laser on. And I wanted to point out that uh, all the logic that you see here is in the PLC. So this morning, very easily, I just enabled that feature so that I could demonstrate this where uh, that was uh, just an option that Chris had on his machine that he could turn that laser on in, in manual mode. So the point here is that you can customize the code or your integrator can customize this code to have the function the way you want it on the machine. If you don't want the laser to turn on and off, you can program to do that. If you want to be able to have the operator trim the parts manually, he can do that as well. So there are some options that we have that uh, will uh, give you uh, kind of a customization to the uh, PNC, where the PNC is a template that clearly it will provide a good 70 or 80 percent of the work is done because out of the box it's ready to go. It's ready to run a CNC part program and uh, you just need to tell it uh, feeds and speeds and maybe some custom codes. But all that stuff is done in ladder logic and uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, I wanted to point out uh, uh, perhaps a couple other things in the top uh, left quadrant. There's some buttons up here, and this is where you select the programs because the part programs are all stored inside the controller. So I'll go ahead and call up another program. This is a uh, test program, and I'll activate that and go back here. And now I'm calling up my program number 13, which is my test curve program. And what I'll do over here is I'll reset the uh, my machine and I'll get rid of those uh, uh, drawings and bring back in my HMI and hit auto and cycle start. So this is just kind of a widget type program right here. And uh, what I wanted to show you here is that uh, we have this uh, function in PNC world called cutter diameter compensation. And I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of things here. I'm going to go over to my uh, parameter screen and uh, I have parameter number two set for 27 millimeters because that's the amount of my compensation. And I'll turn on my block delete and I'll run the program again. And what you'll see is that uh, I can increase or decrease the size of that profile. So it's compensating for either the width of that beam or the width of uh, glue or any type of a cutter where you want to kind of dial in your part. So as I change the value of this parameter number two, uh, let me make it a small value, maybe five millimeters. And I'll just go ahead and cycle start that program again. And you'll see that it's it's running through it, and I even need to put a little bit bigger number in there so we can see it. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 12 millimeters, and then I'll maybe cut that distance in half. And the, the idea here is that you can see that you can really dial in whatever uh, uh, amount you want. And, oh, excuse me, I needed to turn off my, I needed to enable that. Here we go. Okay, that looks better. OK, so I can increase or decrease the size of that and uh, dial in that part. So we have customers that use that on a daily basis, uh, especially handy on a plasma cutter. We have a customer in Montreal that uh, they sell plasma cutters and they have a library of different shapes inside the PLC. And then the operator will select his shape. Maybe it's just a simple rectangle, but then he can uh, uh, put in whatever offset or diameter and he can increase the, or decrease the size of that uh, rectangle to correct the correct size. There's also um, on the top left quadrant, there's an edit button, and this is where you would edit your part program. So this is a full functioning editor that will allow you to edit any of your programs that are inside the PLC. And uh, you can, for example, increase or decrease uh, uh, blocks inside the uh, program. So when I select a block here and hit insert, I can, uh, open it up and you can see that I'm just uh, going through and and inserting blocks inside the program. So you can do uh, a lot of different functions here. It's a uh, custom keypad 
that is custom to the the way you called the axes so i can go through and i can edit the x y and z and i can put in g codes or m codes just by some of the hot keys right here so um, when i when i watch operators use the screen uh, it goes very fast for them you know they select the uh, line that they want to edit and they can quickly put in a new dimension or a new code and they can go ahead and and execute that uh, basically any way they want because it is a, a full functioning editor. The other thing you can do here is that you can teach also. There's some buttons down here that say if I want to teach a line, it automatically puts in the code. Geo1 is for a straight line. If it's a circle, it's Geo2. If it's counterclockwise, it's Geo3. And then you can teach the point and it automatically put in your coordinates for the X and Y axes. So once you are happy with uh, what you have just taught, you can transfer that in. So now that is in the program and uh, you'll be able to execute that. So when you think about it, you could uh, just from scratch, you could write your entire program very quickly uh, just by teaching the coordinates, a combination of jogging the machine where you want to have the machine go and then teach that point. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, delete this out of the program here. So I've got my delete block button here. And I can delete that and I'll delete that line. And now I'm back exactly the way I was. I'll go back to previous page. And uh, I lastly, I want to point out a, a motor button up here that brings up a directory. So when I click on this button on the top left, it brings up this little window down here. And this is where I can put in, uh, for example, my offsets. So there's a comes with a full set of offsets, fixture offsets, length offsets, wear offsets, and offsets limits. So this is an example on how that screen looks. In the CNC world, a fixture offset is G52 through G59. So you can go ahead and put those offsets in, and this is the way you can move the profile anywhere on the grid of that machine by a fixture offset. And you can also teach those as well. You can go over and teach those positions X, Y, and Z to uh, whatever dimension that uh, you need to go. So I'll hit this previous page and that brings me back to the uh, uh, the main screen. And I hit that motor button again and uh, I can go ahead and hit the machine setup. So this is your setup screen. So I know this is a very busy screen, but it's an important screen that lets you configure all of your axes. And I've got six axes in here. I don't have to have six axes. I can have any combination of those that I want, but it tells you things like whether it's a mill or a lathe, whether you want your units in revolutions, degrees, inches per second, and what your uh, time base are and your speeds, basically uh, all the information to customize the machine. So for example, you can have uh, different home position, return positions, and you set your min and max travels that automatically set up those toolpath graphs. So it's a it's a nice important screen to allow you to have some customized setup and do it very quickly. Going back to the main screen, and again, I'm going to hit the uh, option screens, and this is a reference. So this is where all of the M and G codes are located. So this is the template out of the box. The center are the G codes. These are all the G codes that uh, we support. M codes out of the box are uh, M codes that uh, are, you know, standard out of the box. And you can even see in there that uh, M20 and M21 is not in that list because I added that in because that's kind of a custom. But uh, the system is designed to do that, that we know for any given machine, it's very possible that, they're gonna, that there are going to be some custom codes, maybe M10, M11 for clamping the part or some locator or some device that needs to happen on the machine, uh, turning paint on and off, glue on and off. Those are all M codes, that machine codes that can be added in, and you can certainly add in your solenoid or whatever uh, uh, mechanism that you need to uh, accomplish. On the left-hand side, our math or compare, you can do full math capabilities, add, subtract, multiply, divide, sine, cosine, all of those uh, uh, type of math instructions can be put right inside the part program as well. So this is where the machine can be uh, uh, very flexible, where the example of a couple of the parts that I've shown here were axis dimensions, but you can certainly put in uh, other uh, components in there as well. Uh, one of the components I had in there was the parameter. 
which brings me to the right hand side, the list of parameters that you can put inside the part program. And I was using the uh, pound symbol here, right where my mouse is for a parameter. I was using parameter number two to control the size of that cutter comp offset. Going back <clears throat> and show you one more screen here under reference. This is a nice handy screen. This shows you the required syntax. So if you wanted to try out or put some of those items into a part program, this is how you do it. You know, how do you put in an if statement? How do you put in an if then equal or go to? This is the screen that shows you how to do those type of functions. Okay, let me take a look here. Did I miss anything? Let's see. Okay, so I I purposely put it in manual mode and I uh, hit the cycle start button. So on the top of the screen, uh, it's showing a message right here. This is where your operator messages are and I'll hit that cycle start. So every time I try to hit cycle start and I'm not in the right mode, I need to be in automatic. It says that I can't cycle start because I'm in manual mode. So it has a, a full set of uh, indicators or uh, operator messages that you can customize or you can put right on the top of the screen here. And the idea here is that uh, you can generate messages at any time that you want so that you can direct your operator as to um, what's going on with the, uh, the machine. Okay, so let me go back to my uh, PowerPoint and uh, I wanted to uh, point out a, just a couple more things on here. This is a PowerPoint that is uh, public, so you can have a copy of this and you can go back as future reference. Uh, one of the things I have in here is uh, some screenshots of the uh, uh, individual uh, screens that we went over. This is a, uh, uh, a, a slide deck that shows the uh, functions. So wanted to point this out that the uh, controller of PNC is a uh, full CNC capability. It has the uh, toolpath graphics, manual jog, test mode, control reset, fault resets, all of those CNC items that uh, are standard to a CNC are incorporated into this system here. And uh, I also want to bring your attention down to a couple of um, examples down here. I'm going to call up this one here. This was a cool project that we did. It was a very large machine. It had uh, 12, 12 stations, a rotary uh, index machine. And uh, the reason that they wanted to retrofit this, there was some old FANUC CNCs on this machine, and uh, they had a lot of downtime. And that's uh, typical of the reason why we get uh, requests for people that want to upgrade their machines is because of downtime. And uh, when they put the new controller on, the control logics, the PLC controller, and the new digital drives, that downtime goes away. But another thing I wanted to point out is that, uh, and we see this in a lot of cases, when our customers do retrofits, and uh, maybe they want to retrofit from a Siemens control, or Delta Tau, or FANUC, or any of those other controllers, when they go to uh, this system here, another uh, uh, kind of a nice advantage is that uh, the controllers that we have now, and Chris talked about it, they scan so much faster than the older controllers at a rate of maybe 10 times faster. So uh, we're able to increase production. In this particular case, they were able to increase the throughput of this machine times three. And uh, that's a typical response that we get from our customers that, yeah, you know, it's great that we got rid of the downtime, but, you know, kind of a unique advantage too is that we were able to get uh, uh, better parts, better performance out of the servos and uh, cycle time went down, we can get more production out of the machine. All right, so I think that's, um... I think that wraps up um, what I wanted to talk about, and uh, I'll stop my share and hand it back over to uh, Chris. Yeah, thank you, John. That was a great demonstration. I think that about covers it all. Um, so for the next steps, um, if there's anybody watching this video that wants to um, either use their CNC machine, if they have one that they the mechanics are still good on it, but they want to upgrade the controls to Allen Bradley controls. Uh, give us a call. Uh, if you're in the area and you are a CNC machine builder, we can get you trained with uh, with John's team. 
they'll, they'll, his team will spend about a week uh, with your team and get you proficient on uh, building CNC machines with Allen Bradley controls. If you're a system integrator and you want to do these retrofits for the customers in the area, we can get you trained on that. Um, and there's my contact information right there. You can call me or email me directly or your local uh, Rexel sales rep. Thanks, Chris. We we don't have any uh, questions in the chat, but I'll anyone who's on uh, attending live right now want to come off mute and either have a question for any of us, uh, John Miller, or Chris Ryan, or myself. Welcome to do that now. How many uh, how many axes? Uh, can you guys uh, control it once with one control control logic? We have a 15 axis machine that uh, Rexel is looking at right now, and uh, three axes coordinate together, and, and then that's times three. There's three heads where we so we're using three axes coordinated, and another three axes coordinated, and another three axes coordinated. Can you can you do that all on one controller? Um, yeah, we can, and that's that's where PNC is a great fit because uh, it'll all go into one controller. Where that uh, dial machine that I showed you, it ha it had 17 stations, and each station had uh, X, Y, Z, and they all ran that part program simultaneously. So 17 part programs were running, so, and that had a total of 57 axes. And uh, so that uh, that's one of the largest projects that we've done with PNC. But uh, I mean, that's an application that we can do with control logics that uh, we can go uh, you know, up to 100 plus axes. And uh, for, for that example that she had stated, that, that is a great fit, I think, for PNC, just because um, we can do the uh, multitasking of those, where you take that machine, that example, it had, uh, I believe it had five FANUC CNCs that did that same machine. And uh, so the logic was very cumbersome because you had all this interaction and crosstalk between the CNCs to make sure everything was synchronized. But we were able to put it all in one control logics processor, all 57 axes and all the spindles and then all the rest of the automation. And there was still a robot that loaded and unloaded the part. So we were able to uh, do a direct interface to the robot as well. So the uh, customer was, was real excited about the solution because they had uh, just one controller and the code, the inside to do the application was very straightforward where any of their uh, um, floor electricians could come in and plug into the PLC and immediately start troubleshooting where uh, when they had the FANUC system, they had to have a specialized CNC technician come in and troubleshoot the system. And even they had trouble because of the uh, individual crosstalk that was required to combine all five of those CNCs. So um, um, yeah, it's uh, uh, it, it, it would be a great fit for, for that type of machine. And those are the ones that I get excited about because uh, they, uh, uh, you can put together some, some nice custom screens where the architecture that we have is open. So the HMIs are, uh, you can customize those so that you could show all uh, X amount of stations that you have, and that's exactly what we did in that application. We had uh, uh, one overall screen that showed all 57 axes, but then you could drill down and show individual stations and what individual stations were doing. So they could uh, go in and, and monitor and edit and troubleshoot individual stations. And the other thing we gave them was uh, you could bypass stations too. So if a station was uh, was not being used, they could put it in bypass and still run the machine. Yeah, that was going to be my my follow up question. If you you know if you if you were able to break it into stations where you could have an X Y Z, three different you know head one, head two, head three with their own X Y Z as individual stations, so the uh, right. G code wasn't all so encompassed in the one thing that the uh, <laughs> it looked confusing in the uh, text file. Yes. So is, is that how it would work? Would you have separate text files when you break it into a, a station? Yes, you do. You, uh, they, uh, they had 17 stations, so they had 17 different part programs running simultaneously. And uh, the reason we can do that in Control Logics is that that's just another task, and uh, so pretty simple to set up, and that allows us to uh, to do multiple stations and multiple part programs. 
Makes sense. Okay, so I guess, John, one of my questions, and we'll probably talk about this more tomorrow, is uh, we, we've uh, we've done our own integration projects here, and we've been trained to be EBB integrators and uh, Centroid integrators, which is another CNC controller. Um, so I, I'd be interested to see what it takes to do that, uh, like say the one week class to see if we could qualify as an integrator, because that's kind of what we'd want to do is self integrate. Yeah, I wanted to mention too that uh, the all the code that you see here and the screens and the PLC logic, uh, it's all open architecture. Nothing is locked down, and uh, that's been an important piece for us because I mentioned that we've got uh, Rolls Royce as one of our customers that they put a coating on aircraft parts, and all of their part programs have to be certified by the FAA, and uh, they had to retrofit a machine. And they pointed out that, you know, we have to run the same part program. We can't change the part program because the part program has been certified, so we can't make changes to it at all. So we were able to take their part program and uh, make some modifications in our uh, base code and run that same program. And they had things like uh, they would put a negative charge on that part so that the coding would stick to it. So they had a lot of custom things inside the part program to, uh, uh, do different parameters and put different pressure. They would pressurize the, the cavity where they're putting the coating on and those type of things. So it was pretty process intense and a bunch of PID loops as well. But we were able to put all that stuff in the PLC controller and still run their same part program. So they were very happy about that because then they were immediately able to run parts without having to recertify them. And uh, so, you know, I wanted to point that out, that uh, that's one thing that we can do because of the open architecture that we can customize it. And we've had other customers that, you know, we had one customer that they literally had thousands of different part programs. And uh, they said, yeah, we, you know, we, we like the system and we want to make sure we can still use our same part programs because we, want, we don't want to go back in and, and have to uh, reinvent the wheel on all of those. And so we're able to do that as well. So it's... Uh, it's a good fit for a lot of those type of applications as well. You good, Rob? We talk tomorrow. Yeah, I don't want to hold everybody up, but I, okay. I wanted to give somebody a question uh, or a chance to ask a question if they had one as well. I had one more if no one else does. Go ahead, Rob. Um, so one of the things that we do, uh, we, you know, we've got hundreds of CNC machines, Siemens CNC machines here. And typically our operators, they hit the green buttons and we give them a little bit of adjustments. So we have parameters like you have, we call them our parameters in Siemens. And uh, so we have a customized user screen. So there's like a, a front end GUI screen that has a certain amount of parameters on it that we only let the operators adjust within a range. Are there uh, customizable with the panel view? Can you do, do the same thing, customizable screens? with only certain parameters on it? Uh, yes, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you this screen real quick. Um, I just uh, I just called it up and uh, so let me share this for you because I think this will answer your question. This is uh, for our gear cutting machines, our gear hobbers. So this is a what we call a gear wizard. And uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so it uh, it's a screen that has uh, parameters. Those are the uh, in in our world, it's a pound symbol. I know as Siemens, it's an R word, but the pound symbol is going to be the uh, parameter, and uh, so it'll ask questions for the operator. Where in this one, this is a a gear cutting application, so you're putting in the uh, number of teeth on the main, number of teeth on the on the master and number of strokes, those type of things. So there's 10 different parameters on here. And then there's some uh, uh, individual part program library that they can call up. So if they've already created one of these custom gears, it'll go into a separate library and then they can call that back up again. So uh, yeah, I mean, we can certainly do that. And that for me, that's kind of the fun stuff for me is I, I love doing the, the kind of the customization of the screens where the screens are just a they're basically a template and then the idea is you can go in and customize those or add different features or different uh, screens for your individual application and uh, it's all geared to do that 
So what you're seeing here is this is the factory talk view studio. So this is the editor for the panel view. Oh, very good. I think you answered my question well. So uh, that, yeah, okay. thanks, John. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. All right, yeah, thanks for the questions. Thanks, Rob. Um, that's going to be a wrap. Uh, I know we, we finished a little early. I didn't think we were going to take the whole time. Chris, great job. Uh, Chris Ryan and then John Miller, thanks you for your time. I know you're a busy man and uh, you're out in Michigan. My daughter's coming back from Ann Arbor. She's just finishing up there at UMich. So I don't know if you're a go blue guy, but you got blue on. So I'll, I'll just assume you are. <laughs> but if you're not, I, I hope I hope you're not too mad at me. But uh, I, I wasn't a, a University of Michigan fan, but now I am. So when you get a daughter there, I got skin in the game. So, uh, uh, and I also want to thank Peter Aarons. I know he's on the call here. Peter, thank you to the Buffalo Ag Manufacturing Alliance. And uh, we, we will have this uh, recorded and we'd like to share with some of the members there who have a lot of CNC machines who couldn't make the call today. So thanks again. Appreciate it. All right, thanks everyone. Welcome.